Okay, let's be honest. Nobody wants to watch people open boxes. But oh, this, oh, you'd love to do this, huh? Didn't you? You can almost feel it. And you can almost hear it. It's tradition, vintage, all that. Uh, incidentally, I never wanted a moog, 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 moog. Hard to say for us non native speakers. I'd stick with Moog if you are okay with that. Okay, I never wanted a Moog, to be honest, because I always thought that they're overhyped and overpriced. Okay, this is fine vintage sound, nothing wrong with it, and it's gorgeous to this day. Well, it's a bit expensive actually for a monophonic synthesizer which you can't even store sounds with. So, but still, you know, what we like about instruments is this special combination of how it looks and how it feels and how it sounds. And this, of course, is absolutely unique. So when I got this, as you can see, it's not a proper Moog, it's only a box, a hollow shell, but I couldn't pass up, up on it because I thought I'll do this and build my own MIDI Moog because of, of course it's got to be MIDI fight. Okay, what uh, it's still missing um, pitch wheels and mod wheel. The keyboard is not well. I've got a better one. Let's say that from a Blofeld, a Fatah keyboard, which's got aftertouch as well and is very nice. And um, yeah, well, a couple of things. These are only three pole switches where you need six pole but my biggest gripe is that this thing is too too uh, faithful to the original because it's got it hasn't got enough knobs really and uh, it's got those switches which you don't need because if you turn something down to zero why switch it off as well and possibly I'm going to replace these by additional controls because I'm going to need additional controls. So what am I going to do with this thing? First of all, there's a big warning involved. The guy who built this saw at some point that he couldn't finish it. And this serves as a reminder that it's much easier to start things than to end them. So two options to fill this with life. Option one is this wonderful synthesizer sounds great, monophonic, but with some digital additions. It's got a sequencer, it's got a storage for sounds, sound presets. It's got an additional LFO and a cross modulation section as well, small delay, and uh, it's analog. So um, my first thought was rip out the controls, solder in these, and everything's fine, but this will destroy this marvelous little machine, so I'm more for building this as a controller, which makes it a bit more complicated as I'm going to do the electronics for that. But uh, there's a kind of uh, um, common ground with the other idea I had, which is this. I've already built a mini Moog emulator. Um, What's behind this iPad? The controls actually work. Um, it sounds quite great as well, but I never used it because it's still not the same turning dials on a touch screen. It's not the same as doing this. What's behind this? Uh, there's a little board. The design is actually back from the early 2000s and uh, it's a quite decent digital emulation of a Moog. It's, uh, it used to be sold as creamware synthesizers and they've got quite a fan base but uh, the creamware originals are out of production and they have become almost as expensive as Moogs. This board 
is almost the same. It's got a bit more modern uh, DSP in it. And so I could do this and build this in and just have it MIDI controlled. So the first thing I've got to do is to wire up those potentiometers and those switches and to multiplex them and have a small microcontroller read them and put out MIDI and uh, to make this much easier and have a bit of less of soldering what I did was I built a small PCB but this is uh, something for another video. Stay tuned. See you next time.